The World Health Organization will hold an emergency meeting tomorrow to decide what steps to take to deal with the virus. The meeting was called after officials said the mosquito-borne outbreak is spreading explosively. Their words. Joining us to talk more about the emergency meeting is Dr. Cameron Kahn, an infectious disease specialist at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. Good to see you, Dr. Kahn. Good morning. So we also know there are four confirmed cases of the Zika virus among Canadian travelers. They didn't get it here, they got it in one of these countries. Mm -hmm. What's the aim of Monday's meeting? So the aim of Monday's meeting is really two main objectives. One of them is to decide on whether to, to, to declare this a, a public health emergency of international concern. This is basically just a, a technical term for a global emergency. Mm -hmm. The second objective really is to make sure that the international response to this epidemic is balanced and that it doesn't cause excessive disruption or unnecessary disruption to travel and trade, which could adversely affect the global economy. And so do you think that that's realistic, though, when you think about 2,100 women in, uh, in Colombia alone that are pregnant with the Zika virus? We're seeing Brazil. I was speaking with a, a specialist in Brazil who thinks that they're just losing the battle, that, they're, that a vaccine is the only solution. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important to understand sort of from the emergency committee's meeting mm -hmm. the, the playbook, if you will, of how they decide on how to respond to an epidemic. So officially, they, they're bound by something called the International Health Regulations. This is a treaty that 196 countries, including Canada, are, are bound to. And one of the central principles is that any response to an epidemic shouldn't cause an unnecessary impact to affected countries, because if it does, and they start to feel that there's a disincentive to share information in a, in a timely way, uh, then the whole world actually loses in that situation. So it's a delicate mm. balance between a public health response uh, that's consistent with the epidemic, but not causing it disincentives of sharing information. Do you think that this is a result of the WHO being frankly criticizing for acting too s slowly uh, when it came to Ebola? Are they trying to kind of make up for that with Zika virus? You know, it's interesting. I mean, the, the ink is still drying on a number of the reports that harshly criticized WHO for its slow response to the Ebola epidemic. And I think, you know, the one thing that they've learned here is that convene the emergency committee early, which is happening tomorrow. Um, and I think the, the bigger question in my mind is they're well aware of the criticisms. The question is whether they will be capable of actually mobilizing an effective response that the world is expecting and, and requiring of them. Are you confident that people like you will be able to find a vaccine sooner rather than later? Mm -hmm. You know, with vaccine development, the interesting thing is, I mean, this usually takes years to develop. This isn't something that, uh, uh, you know, with the Ebola vaccine, that had been in development for years before, uh, you know, the, the outbreak in West Africa. In this instance, we're really starting at a much earlier stage. I think we're looking at years before a vaccine uh, could be available for, for public use if everything actually goes smoothly. Well, that is a long time. All right, so let's, let's um, talk about what this means for Canadian travelers. So say uh, a Canadian woman goes to one of the affected countries, uh, does not get pregnant while there, but is bitten by a mosquito with the Zika virus. She comes, she's there, say, for a week on vacation. Mm -hmm. She comes back to Canada. How long should she wait before conceiving? This is a really great question. This is something I've been hearing a lot just in my own clinical practice. Um, the simple answer is we don't actually have the answers. There's no good data to drive us. But let me explain the rationale as to how I come up with uh, two months at this point in time. First of all, the incubation period of this virus is in the order of two weeks or less, which means the time from being bitten to the time to actually getting symptoms. The period of viremia, which is when the virus is going through your bloodstream, is about a week. So that would be roughly three weeks. Mm -hmm. These viruses are not known to cause this dormant state where they can sit in your body for years, for example, unlike some other viruses do. So I'm thinking three weeks is a reasonable time frame, but there's so many things that we don't know. So I would almost just create a buffer and say, well, look, probably three weeks to a month might be reasonable, but why don't we just mm -hmm. say two months for the time being until we have more evidence that to me seems like a reasonable time frame. Now this is assuming that the pregnant woman does not develop symptoms, or the woman, sorry, returning, does not mm -hmm. develop symptoms of Zika virus. If she does, she needs to go and actually see her healthcare provider before deciding to conceive. If she's had no symptoms, I think two months is probably a reasonable time frame. Dr. Khan, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Dr. Cameron Khan is an infectious disease specialist at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto.